What's up everyone, thanks for watching. My name's Dave and today I'm going to show you how I made this shaker style pine cupboard using only hand tools. I've been watching quite a few videos lately by Wood by Wright and the hand toolery and got inspired to do some traditional woodworking. For this project I'm going to be using pine. It's the cheapest common board you could pick up at the home center. After letting the wood acclimate to my shop for a few weeks, I'll start by marking out all the rough lengths of the components of the cupboard. Then I'll use my crosscut saw over at my saw benches to cut all the pieces to length. These are going to be the case sides, so after cutting the first piece, I'll just trace out the line for the second and then make that cut as well. Then I can continue on cutting all the other pieces to length as well. Um, I'm going to cut everything in pairs. If there's going to be two shelves and they need to be the same size, then I'll cut one, mark the other one, and cut it out based on the first one, just to get all the sizes about the same. Once all the pieces are cut to manageable lengths, I can head over to the workbench and start flattening the boards. Most warped boards have a convex and a concave side, and I'll start by flattening the concave side. I use my number 5 plane set to a pretty deep cut and work across the grain and then come back and work each side and then just slowly work it down until I get it flat. I would normally set the plane to take a lot deeper of a cut during this process to get through the work faster, but these boards right from the home center were just shy of 3 quarters of an inch thick, so I set the plane a little lighter just to salvage as much material as possible. Once I think I'm close, I'll use a set of winding sticks to make sure that there's no twist in the board. Once I've flattened one face, I'll put the board in my leg vise and true up or joint one edge, making sure that it's 90 degrees to the side that I just flattened. I'm using my number 7 joiner plane for this. I'll take a few passes and then check it with my square, making sure to register against the flat face. Once I've got that first side jointed, then I'll make a reference mark that connects to the mark that I made on the first side that I worked on, and this way I'll know that I have one good face and one good edge of the board. Next I'll mark out the width of the board using my panel gauge. Then I can take it back to the leg vise and use my joiner plane again to plane down to the line. If I needed to take a lot of material off, this is where I'd use my rip saw, but I'm trying to use the full width of the board if possible. And then to work on that last face of the board and set the thickness, I use my marking gauge and find the thinnest spot of the first board. I'll set the gauge to that and then I'll mark all the way around that board and then plane away until I get down to the line. For all the boards that come after this one that need to be the same thickness, I'll just keep this marking gauge set aside, uh, mark around those boards and work down to that same line. So I repeated the same dimensioning process for all the pieces of the cupboard. Um, there were a couple of boards though that were so twisted and cupped that uh, I would have had to take away too much material. So in those cases I ripped the boards down to their final size first and then it was a lot easier to flatten and I could take a lot less material off. So the last step of the dimensioning process was to get all the boards to their final length. And to do this I was already pretty close with the saw so I could set up my shooting board with my new tool and number 62 a low angle plane and then clean up one edge and make sure that I got it nice and square and then come over to the other end and just shoot the board down to its final length. The first bit of joinery that I'm going to do is to create rabbits in the back of the case sides. This is going to hold the ship lapped backer boards that will be installed later. I'll start by setting the depth of my marking gauge using my square. Then I'll scribe lines in the case side so I know where the rabbit needs to be. Now I can start creating the rabbit. I'm pretty fortunate and have a rabbiting plane with a fence built onto the side, but if you don't have one, you could easily get this done with a shoulder plane. Once I cut this rabbit down to the right depth, I'll uh, bring over the other case side and repeat the process. There are going to be two permanently attached shelves on this piece, a bottom shelf and a top shelf that will act as a dust frame. Um, both of them get joined to the case by sliding dovetails. The first thing I need to do to make these is mark out the depth of the dovetail on each shelf. Then I'll use my carving knife to deepen the line that I marked out. 
The dovetails are going to have a 1 and 6 ratio or just about 9.5 degree slope to them. So I create a board and cut that angle out on it and then I'll use that to register my chisel against, put it up against the end of the board and then I can create the dovetail pretty evenly across the whole board. This is a pretty easy method for me to do and I have a hard time messing this one up. So I just clamp the board and the shelf that I'm making the dovetail on between two bench dogs and chisel away and end up with a pretty good looking joint at the end. Next I'll lay out where I want the dovetails to go on the case side. I start by marking out where the shelves are going to go on the case sides and then I'll measure out the narrowest point of the dovetail with a set of dividers. Now I can transfer that thickness over to the case sides and scribe with the dividers all the way down. Um, I'll come back with the carving knife again and deepen that line. Next I'll use my marking gauge to mark out the depth of the dovetail. And then I'll come back with my carving chisel and take out a little bit of material to create a wall or a shelf that my saw can ride against. I'll use my dividers one more time to mark out the fattest part of the dovetail. I'll transfer those marks to the depth line on the case sides and then I'll use my carcass saw to saw down to those points. Next I'll use the longest paring chisel that I have to remove as much waste from the case side as I can. Then I'll come back in with my small router plane and remove the rest of the material. I'd love to tell you that I got these all right on the first shot, but it took a little bit of fiddling around with them and removing a little material here and there, and then eventually I got everything to slide together pretty easy. Then I was able to start focusing on the face frames for the cabinet. They're going to be made with half lap joinery. I'll start by marking out where each board intersects, and then I'll measure down half the thickness of this board. Cutting out on the ends was pretty easy. I just sawed halfway down the thickness of the board and then flipped it up and used my rip saw to cut down the shoulder. Then I was able to clean up to the lines using a shoulder plane. For all the other joints on this board, I would strike a line in and then take my chisel and create a shelf for the saw to ride in just to make sure I got a clean, crisp shoulder. Then I could mark the depth of the cut I was going to have to make using a router plane set to half the thickness of the board. Then I could saw down the shoulders using my carcass saw and then come back and saw a bunch of curves down where the waist is going to be. Then I can come back with my chisel and knock out most of the waist. I'll use my router plane to clean up most of the joint and then come back with my shoulder plane just to true everything up and make it perfect. Next I'll use the finished rail to mark out where all the joints are going to go on the second rail and then uh, strike lines in it and cut out all the waste just like I did on the first one. There's going to be small bevels on the bottom of each rail. I'll cut them out with my rip saw. Then I'll use a block plane to clean up the tapers. After performing a test fit and making sure that I have all the joints nice and tight, I'll uh, be ready to apply some glue to this. I'll just put some glue to each of the half laps and then clamp everything up um, and make sure that everything's square. Then I'll let it sit in the clamps overnight. I'm also ready to glue up the main part of the case now. So I'll take my hand planes and clean up all the inside faces of the case because I can't get to them later and uh, make sure they're nice and smooth. I'll come back with a card scraper and just clean everything up nice and perfect and then I can glue all this carcass together. One thing to note here is that the glue is going to make your wood fibers swell so if your dovetail joints are tight in the first place it's going to make them extremely difficult to put in. I learned that the hard way and I should have made them a little looser. After letting everything dry for a few hours I'm ready to install the face frame to the case. It, the face frame is only going to be held in by glue so I'll just apply some glue around the case and then clamp the face frame down to it, making sure that the case and the frame are square. While the glue dries on the case, I'm ready to start making the panel door. I'll start by cutting the rails and styles to length, and then I'll come back and hit the edges with my shooting board just to clean them up. The rails and the styles all get grooves down the center of them. I'm going to use my Stanley 45 and a quarter inch iron to do this. The plow plane makes pretty fast work of this. The only thing to remember here is that you want to register the fence on the plane to the same side of the board on all four rails and styles. 
The frame for the door is going to be held together with mortise and tenon joints, and I'm just marking out for the tenons here. I'll start making the tenon by creating the shelf that my saw can ride in in the shoulder of the joint, and then I will saw down to the line, and then put the board in my leg vise, come back in with my rip saw, and saw both cheeks off. Then I can clean up the shoulders with my hand plane. I'm using a mortise and chisel to knock out the waste and create the mortise in the, each rail. Uh, it's soft white pine, so I'm just going to go real slow and take little bits at a time until I create the deep enough mortise for each um, tenon to fit in. There's about 3 eighths of an inch between the end of the rail and where the mortise starts, so I'm cutting out the haunch on the tenon of each rail. To create the raised panel, I'm just using a hand plane. I'll start by creating a bevel across the grain, um, so any tear out and stuff will be removed when I plane with the grain later. Um, then I'll plane with the grain. I'll come back and clean everything up with some sandpaper, making sure to leave the panel lines nice and crisp. I don't want the panel to sit proud of the door, so I'm creating a rabbit all the way along the back to not only accommodate the quarter inch groove, but to inset the panel some. Since it'll be hard to reach later, I'm going to go ahead and apply some finish to the panel now before I slide it into the door. I'm going to use two coats of General Finish's Armor Seal. Now I'm ready to assemble the door. I'll slide the panel in, I'll apply some glue to the mortise and tenons, and then I'll uh, put everything together and apply some clamps. Next up is the top. The top's going to be made of two boards, uh, so I put both of them in my leg vise and then use my joiner plane to run across them. Um, I'll joint both edges, this way when I put the two boards together, I'll have a nice tight seam um, with no gaps. These boards turned out pretty good. There was a slight gap in the middle, but it's really small. Uh, most people shoot for that. Uh, unfortunately, I did it by accident, um, but it's called a spring joint, and you could get away with just applying one clamp in the middle to keep these boards together while the glue dries, but um, just to make things easier to work with, I have the three clamps here. Next, I can create the shiplap boards that are going to be on the back of the case. Um, they're pretty simple. Cut them to length. Um, plane them all nice and smooth and then cr use a rabbit plane or a shoulder plane to create a rabbit on opposite sides of each board. This way they kind of all slide into each other so you don't see any light through the back of the case but um, it'll still allow for some seasonal movement. One thing I almost forgot to do was install the shelf pins. The case is going to have one floating shelf somewhere in the middle of the case, so um, I'm just using my egg beater drill and the template to drill out where the shelf pins will sit. After the glue's dried, I'll come in and plane the face frame flush with the case, and then I'll run the hand plane over the whole case assembly. I'm going to use desktop fasteners to hold the top to the case, so I'll uh, make those small mortises that the desktop fasteners will fit in now. Um, it's very similar to cutting out a hinge mortise. These figure eight shaped fasteners work pretty well and uh, they allow for seasonal wood movement in the top. Now I'm ready to start working on the dovetails for the drawer. I'll first start by marking out the thickness of the side boards onto the face board. And then I can use my dividers to figure out where the tails are gonna go and then mark them out using my dovetail gauge. Now I can use my dovetail saw to cut the tails, and then I'll come back in with a coping saw and remove all the waste in the middle. I'll go back to the dovetail saw to cut away any waste that's on the ends. Now I can use a small chisel to clean up any of the waste I couldn't get with the coping saw. Next I'll transfer the marks from the tails over to the pin board. Then I'll cut the pins for the half blind dovetails on the face board. I'll cut down to both lines that I made and then come in with a chisel and chop out all the waste. I'll use the smallest chisel I have to clean up all the corners and get out all the crumbs. This might be the first time ever that I got a good fit on the first try. After the half blind dovetails are done, I'll take everything apart and use a number 45 plow plane again to make the quarter inch groove that the drawer bottom will sit in. 
Then I can mark out and cut out the through dovetails that will hold the back of the drawer on. The backboard of the drawer is not as deep or as uh, wide as the side drawers are. So I'll cut the tails and then I'll cut a notch underneath the tail that goes down to the groove. This way I can slide the drawer bottom in later. Now I can take and transfer the tail marks over to the pin board, um, cut down the pins, chop out the waist, and make sure I get a good tight fit. To make the drawer bottom, I'm using material that I planed down to be about a half inch thick. I'll start by beveling the sides and the front down to a quarter inch. This way it can slide into the grooves that I made earlier. Then I'll test fit and slide the drawer bottom into the drawer. Once I know I've got the fit right, I'll drill a pilot hole and attach the drawer bottom to the back of the drawer using one nail. Now that the glue's had some time to dry on the panel door, I'll clean everything up with a hand plane, making sure all the boards are even and clean and get rid of all the dings and scratches that I made during assembly. Um, once that's finished, I'll do some test fitting into the case and plane away a little bit of the edges on the top and bottom and sides. The low angle plane leaves a pretty good finish, but it's not real consistent, so I'll run over the whole piece with some 220 grit paper. I'll use my low angle plane to adjust the fit of the drawer to this case and to clean up the dovetails I made earlier. Here I'm gluing and clamping a couple of scrap boards um, to the sides of the drawer to act as guides so that the drawer doesn't rack back and forth when trying to open and close it. Now that the glue's had some time to dry on the top, I'm ready to finish it up. I'm going to plane it flat, clean it up, and then I'm going to create a bevel with my hand plane on the front and the two sides. Now I'll apply some finish to the door, the drawer, the case, and the top before I assemble all those pieces. Um, I'm using General Finish's Armor Seal here. This uh, finish is great. It's real easy to apply and uh, it looks good when it's finished. Now I'm ready to install some hinges. Um, I picked these up at the hardware store for like three bucks for the set. Uh, they kind of look like they're hand forged and I think they fit the piece pretty well. I also picked up these simple wooden knobs for the handle for the drawer and the doors. I would have turned my own, you know, by hand and all, but my spring pole lathe's in the shop. I used some sandpaper and some tape to shim the door into place and get a good even reveal all the way around before attaching the hinges. I made the door stop for the case out of a simple block of wood with a magnet glued into it and then a screw on the door side. The last thing I need to do is install the shiplap backboards. I'm using hand cut brad nails that I picked up from a woodworking store for this. They're pretty cool and uh, I just use one nail on the top and one nail on the bottom shelf for each board. Now I can install the floating shelf and this hand tool project is done. I had a great time doing some traditional woodworking and this is a really cool project with a lot of skill building in it. Um, it covers a lot of different joinery from half lap joinery, mortise and tenon, um, half blind dovetails, through dovetails, sliding dovetails, all kinds of different stuff. So I hope you guys had a good time watching it uh, and if you did please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.